Hey everybody, it's Alika Lifty, and today let's brew a Hario V60. The Hario V60 is a really popular brew method, and it's a really great brew method. It's great for beginners, it's used by professionals. Um, you see it around a lot, and we get a lot of questions about how to brew with the Hario V60. Uh, today I'm going to share a pretty simple recipe. This is my go to recipe on the Hario V60. You'll see it show up in various forms or in its default form for a lot of our brew guides for a lot of different coffees because it's a really good recipe for a really good brewer. Let's talk a little bit about what makes the Hario V60 unique. One, this is a cone shaped brewer. Just about as simple as it gets, you're brewing on top of a cylindrical cone. Um, the Hario V60 has these really thick ridges, a really large opening at the bottom. It's cone shape, those ridges and the large opening are going to give us a couple of things unique to the Hario V60 versus different brew methods. Um, the combination of that open airflow and the large opening is gonna create a really fast flow rate. Due to the shape, that cone, the same amount of coffee in the V60 is going to be taller than that same amount in a flat bottom dripper. What that means is your water is gonna get higher, your flow rate is gonna be even faster still. What this is gonna do for your flavor is it's going to highlight the acidity and the complexity of your coffee, making that texture more tea-like because that combination of um, faster flow rate as well as the taller amount of coffee that your brew is having to travel through, it's gonna trap a lot more insoluble particles. So expect your Hario V60 to accentuate more acidity and to be more clarity forward than different brew methods. The recipe that we're gonna to use today is going to take advantage of that and also try to mitigate some of those issues to give us a more balanced cup that's really repeatable. Some issues with V60 recipes are gonna be choking your filter. This will happen if you let that water level stay too high and it packs down that brew bed and is actually able to close off the airflow around these ridges through that hole. Um, also letting that water level get too high, you're gonna get bypass out the side of that filter, which can create a more watery cup and lose you some of that sweetness and that complexity. So, today's recipe, we need a Hario V60. This will work in an O1, an O2, or an O3. I prefer the O2. It's a nice middle of the road brewer. Have yourself a decanter, gram scale with timer, mug, and I like to use a borosilicate stir stick something small, something like a chopstick or uh, the back end of a spoon will work perfectly. All right, we're gonna be using 15 grams of coffee, ground medium fine. This was 20 clicks on my Commandante C40. We're gonna start at 10 on your Barazza Encore and this'll be one, but we would really want it a little bit finer than that for the fellow Ode. All right, let's grab our paper filter. Give that a fold. You always wanna fold along that perforation for your V60 filters. Toss that in and let's wet our brewer. All right, let's wet that paper filter. I like to start around the edges to help it catch. And I'm gonna pour about 100 grams of water or 100 milliliters. You should feel some of that heat on the side of your brewer. If you notice that filter has sunk too deep into these ridges and has not kept its cone shape, just give it a little bit of a tug. I'm gonna use this water to put some heat on that stir stick. All right, 15 grams of coffee, ground medium fine. Toss that straight into the middle of our brewer shake it flat and we're going to use 250 milliliters of 210 degree fahrenheit water this is hotter water it's actually going to help us get more insoluble material some of those oils and it's going to help us flow faster which is helpful for such a fine grind setting all right we're going to separate this into three simple pours let's start my timer and let's bloom i'm going to bloom 50 grams Pretty big for only 15 grams of coffee, but I want to make sure I've saturated everything into that cone. 
should see are bubbling. I'm gonna grab that borosilicate stir stick, gently break apart any clumps I have in that brewer. And here at 30 seconds, I'm gonna pour really heavy, tight circles here in the middle, raising up to 150 grams total. This is gonna create a sort of valley. This osmotic flow through the brew bed um, while keeping some coffee along these ridges as that water tries to escape out those passes. But the force of our pour is out the bottom where we have more coffee and therefore we're less likely to throw things out that bottom and clog that filter. And so we're keeping the side fairly even. All right, when I get to a minute and 30 seconds, I'm gonna pour another 100 grams here in the middle, finishing off at 250 grams total. Heavy in the middle, let that water level raise up. We should fully cover all of those grounds we had there on the side. If that last pour didn't cover your grounds again, then we've ground too coarse. Our flow rate is too fast. We dripped all the way out of that brew bed and we're gonna get a little bit more astringency, but we can still get a pretty good cup if it was really close. If you notice that, give yourself a spiral, push all of that coffee back into the brew bed. If we've ground too fine and you didn't see that valley formed with that last pour, then we have the, um, opportunity to choke this brewer. It's gonna flow really slow, and we're gonna get muddled flavor, really tannic black tea notes. Our target drain time for this coffee in this recipe is two and a half minutes. This is my standard drain time for this recipe. Uh, I expect that when I get a brand new coffee, I'm gonna shoot for two and a half minutes with my grind size and taste for balance. If I'm using a really slow draining Ethiopia, really dense coffee, then it might need a little bit longer, maybe even three minutes, all the way up to three and a half minutes to give us really great flavor. Versus less dense coffee. If I have a Brazil or a really easy draining Colombian coffee, then I might even need two, two minutes and 15 seconds. It smells really excellent. Serve. And enjoy.